So, ladies and gentlemen, our final panelist this morning. We have here with us uh, Reverend Dr. Tevi Tanawanram Banivanua. Please allow me to introduce our last panelist today. Reverend uh, Dr. Nawanra has been working with the Methodist Church in Fiji for over 35 years. He previously worked as a school and hospital chaplain, lecturer at the Theological College in the Wilevu, uh, before taking up the role of the Deputy General Secretary of the Methodist Church in Fiji and Rotuma. Reverend Dr. Nawanra was a circuit minister for the Wigan, Bolton and Rochdale District Church in, in the United Kingdom. He also had various involvement in the Methodist Church of Fiji in the areas of finance, training, and various church and school services. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Reverend Dr. Tebita Nawanda, the president of the Methodist Church in Fiji. Madam Minister, Permanent Secretaries, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to be here on behalf of not only the Methodist Church in Fiji as its president, but also as the president of the Fiji Council of Churches, which uh, represent uh, a bigger uh, number of uh, uh, denominations, almost about 50% of Fiji's population. I would like to begin with some quotation Male and female, we are created equally by God in God's image. Our Lord Jesus Christ saved us equally on the cross. The third, how can we say we are saved if our women and children are not safe? Fourth, violence against women and children is not the way of Christ. And fifth, it is a sin. And sixth, Jesus calls us to love one another. And finally, our communities of faith must stand together and resist violence against women and children in our community and in our homes. These, uh, the quotations above, were the words of uh, leaders of uh, member churches of the Fiji Council of Churches speaking with one voice as part of the contribution, our contribution to the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. Uh, some of you would have witnessed this sometimes in December last year. And it was not really it has not really been uh, the practice of uh, churches to advertise what we consider to be part of our ongoing work. Depth in faith in action is disappointing. Matthew, this church and um, the Christian communities are working <coughs> to address this issue from three perspectives. Perspective one is uh, on prophetic uh, perspective, and two on pastoral perspective, and three on practical ones. On prophetic, we cannot say we are saved if our homes are not safe. The Christian community needed to look beyond the usual thinking of salvation as merely a spiritual concept. Two, the Methodist Church's uh, new exodus calls not only for a saved family, but a safe family. We as Methodists cannot limit our work to the spiritual salvation of our community we must also look at the physical, the economical, the social salvation of our community. Saved communities must also be safe communities. Anything less means we are failing 
or falling short. We are missing the mark and we are straying away from the way in our ministry. In the Old Testament, Genesis 1 reveals God's heart and purpose for humankind. Genesis 1.27 affirms that both women and men were created equally in the image of God. In this light, the church believes in the full equality of men and women in the family, in the community, and in the church, and sees marriage as an equal partnership between a man and a woman. Fourthly, inherent uh, dignity, women should be treated with respect and dignity, not just because they are mothers, daughters, sisters, and wives, but because they are equal. We are equal to them as men in the eyes of God. On the pastoral perspective, in the past, we have uh, sent participants to attend workshops, seminars on gender-based violence. Today, we claim this responsibility to educate our members and our leaders and call our church to ensure that it is a church in which every person feels not just safe, but loved, welcomed, and valued. Also on pastoral, some examples of what the churches are doing currently. The Anglican House of Sarah provides counseling and referrals. The Family Center, uh, Care Center which is run by the Salvation Army, has homes in Suba, Lautoka, and Lambasa, and is one of the main providers of emergency accommodation. And thirdly, the Methodist Church, Women Fellowship, Men's Fellowship, and Christian Citizenship and Social Services Departments are conducting training for male leaders on gender equality and addressing gender-based violence and violence against children. Our connectional plan for the new exodus of the church includes addressing domestic violence and uh, spousal rape. Another strategy is to address this issue in the context of family through our newly established family life ministry, just established the end of last year. On the practical perspective, <clears throat> for the Methodist Church in Fiji, we have a code of conduct, which includes some important sections on abuse of women and domestic violence and children's protection. And I'll uh, quote some. In their ministry and in their personal lives, ministry leaders, ministry leaders meaning Talatalas, Wagatawas, and all other uh, leaders in the, in the church, both uh, ordained and lay, ministry leaders shall uphold the protection of women. Also, in our code, it says, in Fiji, domestic violence is against the law. Same code says, ministry leaders shall not use their power to dominate their spouse, intimidate them, or subordinate them. It also says that ministry leaders shall be examples of loving spouses and parents to show the love of God. Ministry leaders shall seek counsel to gain new understanding from scriptures and theology about the place of women in the Christian faith and how 
to avoid giving unhelpful advice to women that could lead to harmful domestic situations. Ministry leaders shall encourage victims of domestic violence to report the abuse and hold perpetrators accountable for their actions. Ministry leaders shall challenge any words and actions that perpetuate violence against women and children. It also says that in their treatment of children and in their teaching and supervision of others who care for children, ministry uh, leaders shall do all they can to encourage the physical, emotional, and spiritual development of children. The code also says ministry leaders shall not hit or belittle children or neglect their needs. And I continue. Ministry leaders shall use constructive, non-harmful ways to manage children's behavior and shall encourage others to do the same. Also, sexual activity with children is illegal and immoral. Ministry leaders shall not engage in any sexual activity with children and shall do all they can to ensure others do not sexually abuse children. And also, ministry leaders shall report to the police and to their superintendent any illegal sexual activity with children of which they become aware. So all those are part and parcel of our code of conduct which was introduced in 2014. And ministry leaders, as I said, is for both lay uh, and uh, ordained ministries. It is meant to set the example for the whole community to follow. Methodists are called to follow the lead of John Wesley in our practical Christianity. John Wesley says to the early members of uh, the Methodist societies, three simple rules for Christian living. One, do no harm. Two, do good. And three, stay in love with God. The three simple rules of John Wesley. As Christians and as Methodists, we must ensure that all we do must not harm anyone or anything physically, emotionally, verbally, sexually, or psychologically. We must seriously commit to this. The Fiji Council of Churches has a working group on gender-based violence, and the convener of this group is Archbishop Winston, facilitate, facilitators of House of Sarah, and Reverend James Baguan, and uh, representatives of uh, member churches. First steps that they are trying to do are uh, making uh, mapping gap analysis of what churches are doing, not doing, and what we can do better. Secondly, we are also uh, looking at uh, working to address the issue or this issue through our schools, strengthening our moral values teaching, including bullying and gender issues. And thirdly, one key area is the area of men as partner against gender-based violence, in particular addressing how masculinity is understood. We need to challenge the conventional images of masculinity which promote the ideal man as strong, dominant, and in charge. These images justifies the use of violence to resolve conflict and to you 
establish male control of public, faith, and domestic spheres. A more positive image of masculinity is needed when we move away from, the, from a situation where men seek to dominate women and into situations where men and women are in partnership, we will be more faithful to our God. The idea for men to recognize that patterns of male violence against women result from negative images of masculinity, images of men as warriors, and even as gods. We want them to see that there are other images for men that see strength in partnership with women rather than dominance over them. We need to look to biblical teachings which uh, present uh, these alternative images of partnership between men and women. We have been working <coughs> excuse me, with the Uniting World uh, and uh, Reverend Dr. Cliff Bird, some of you may know, to look uh, biblically and theologically at concepts of masculinity and gender with the aim of enabling men to become more conscious of gender as it affects their own lives as well as those of women. We want an inclusive approach for men to participate in transforming gender-based relationships which produces male violence. Partnership with the current stakeholders just two weeks ago I was invited by the Minister, uh, Minister of Defense to talk about the rise of crime. The need to strengthen that with the police and partnership uh, with the social uh, welfare and women. We also need to work as partners with Fiji Women's Crisis Center Fiji Women's Rights Movement and FemLink Pacific, the UN, uh, UN uh, Women, and others working as partners, not just as target groups for workshops and education. When I was uh, Gen Secretary of the South Pacific Association of uh, theological schools, what we call SPATS. I was privileged in uh, 1998, 1999 to 2000 to support the development of a curriculum for theological schools on domestic violence. And this uh, curriculum was given to colleges like the Pacific Regional Seminary, the Pacific Theological College, the Willewu Theological College, and Fulton College, St. John the Baptist College, and other theological schools in Fiji and also Australia, in the Pacific, including New Zealand and Australia. I hope that this curriculum, which has been translated into the vernacular, the Toke language, is being used some training of ministers as church leaders. What we wanted there was to train the Talatalas, all the Talatalas in the region, to be aware that there is such things as violence against women and it, it, it is time that we must work together. It came in, I think it was uh, launched in 2001. So it, it, it has been there. We've been uh, working on that. And uh, hopefully the, those people that are at the helm now will continue that uh, uh, move. And finally, partnership, uh, partnerships with other faith on this issue 
is very much needed because violence against women and children is not only a Christian issue. It is a Hindu issue. It is a Sikh issue. It is a Muslim issue. All our faith communities need to work together to address this issue. Thank you. Um, my name is Sarah Chan. I'm representing Empower Pacific. Um, so my, my question is directed to Reverend Dr. Tabitha. Uh, so thank you for your uh, wonderful presentation and to all the panels. Uh, thank you for your information and knowledge. So um, my question is, um, from your presentation, Methodist Church is doing a wonderful work. Uh, lots of good mapping and you are still mapping out in order to address violence against women and girls. My interest is to know what challenges the church is still facing to address violence against women and girls. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, what challenges the church is facing at the moment on uh, the issue. Yes, we, uh, uh, the first thing that we're trying to do is to put into place uh, our plans. You know, in 2014-2013, we uh, put into place through our conference the systems whereby we will work. You know, through our, what we call our national plan, our local NGO, our new exodus. So all, all these are um, more or less in place right now. And uh, the implementation of, of, of these are ongoing, as I said. You know, we're trying to reach our schools, the church schools. We have about more than 30 schools. Uh, and, and also through our women's uh, section uh, that are here, uh, some of the members, uh, we, are, we are trying to, uh, to do that. And, and uh, in partnership with the others, we are also uh, trying to, uh, to uh, help with the situation. Uh, the challenges. The challenges is, um, uh, as you uh, are aware, you know, some of uh, the difficulties are the, the uh, victims don't uh, often uh, come out with uh, what has happened to them. You know, uh, so in the systems that we are trying to do, we are encouraging them to come out, not to hide any such instances where they, are, they go through uh, this violence. So uh, that is one, because uh, we, we, we hope that we will continue uh, to pursue that line. And secondly, as I said, uh, you know, uh, in December last year, we, in, in the break of silence, uh, we wanted to use the pulpit, the pulpit, because the talk over with the families, we've been encouraging families and uh, all this, you know, doesn't seem to be sort of bearing much fruit. So since the pulpit is one of the main uh, place where people come to and listen to, so we are using the pulpit uh, uh, in our churches to try and address this issue. So we're trying every ways and means uh, of helping the, the issue. Now. Uh, for everybody. Um, I'm also changing on the today. Um, I guess the, one of the impressions that I felt here today was that we're all really kind of converted to this anyway. You're talking to the converted. We all want to get on that, um, that, that steamrolling effect of being able to help our women and our children. Uh, my question today would be, um, have you seen, I guess, a change in the demographics of people that uh, the women that approach your services? Have you seen an increase? Um, have you seen a change in perhaps more um, uh, more women that maybe are religious and non-religious, or have you seen a complete change in the type of people that um, uh, in their numbers? Have there been a change over the years with the laws that have been implemented or the plans that are actually in place in Fiji at the moment? Have you seen a change? 
I'm very uh, proud of my president, and I have a question for him. Um, but he had uh, uh, said something about preaching from the pulpit about uh, I, I, at wedding hall. Uh, to me, there's still not enough preaching from the pulpit. Um, and can that, in the uh, action reading, maybe for the week, so that we can prepare ourselves? Uh, because we have a system that we have cell group uh, uh, in our system. I think maybe if we have that in the election reading for the week, we will be able to discuss together uh, before we come to hear from the pulpit as a family. Because in the cell groups, we're supposed to be uh, talking about things. In our group, in our cell group, which includes children. It's a whole, it's a family thing, you know. Um, I've been hearing of uh, 